Hello, everyone. So today we're going to start our new chapter on motion and forces. So we're going to work our way through this. Uh, please feel free to add to your CK12 notes as you go, because we're going to be doing some practice math problems. And I want to make sure that you are uh, getting any extra information in your notes as we go. All right, so first up, let's talk about motion. What is motion? And we all kind of think about what it is, but we don't actually often think about the definition of motion. So motion is a change in the position of an object related to time. So we often refer to motion both in the change in position and how long it took for that change in position to occur. And when we describe motion, we often describe it using several things. It's position, where it's located, the speed that it's going, and we're gonna talk a lot about speed today, the direction of motion, and then lastly, it's acceleration. And we're also gonna be talking about how speed and acceleration are not the same thing. All right, so average speed. This is a rate. So I know in math class, you often are talking about rates, right? So the change in something over time. And so um, we're going to be talking about uh, average speed, which is a rate and how we calculate average speed. So this one you should be pretty familiar with because you talk about speed in normal everyday life all the time, the speed of a car, for example. So the speed of a car is going to be calculated by how far that car goes in the amount of time it took for it to travel that distance. So it's distance divided by time, okay? Speed is equal to distance divided by time. And that's pretty obvious because when we think about a speed, if I were to ask you how fast you drove in your car this morning, you would probably told me, tell me what number of miles distance per hour time, remember this line stands for per, so miles per hour, kilometers per second, right? So distance over time is the speed. So um, can we use this formula to calculate distance? Yes, we can. Can we use the same formula to calculate time? Yes, we can. So if we know two of these three variables, we can rearrange this formula and solve for any one of the three, so long as we have two of the others. All right, so we're gonna practice this and I'm gonna have you pause this video in a minute and um, give the math a try. All right, so remember that we are going to still be using the DILF-SAU steps. I know it is your favorite acronym. Uh, DILF-SAU, right? Draw a simple diagram, list the unknown variables and the known variables. Uh, write out the formula that you will use to solve for the unknown variable. Substitute in the values with units, with units uh, for the variables and give your answer and you need to have units on every number on your paper. Okay, here is our new triangle. Speed is equal to distance over time. So remember, if I cover up one thing, then it leaves me with the other two. So this is my division bar. If I cover up time, I get distance over speed. And if I cover up distance, I get speed times time. All right, so let's take a look at a practice problem. A child is running on the playground. She runs from the swings to the slide, which are 10 meters apart. It takes her 15 seconds to cross the playground. What is her average speed? Use dilf -Sau. Please pause the video now. Okay, so hopefully you gave that a try. Uh, this would be the um, triangle that we might use to uh, come up with the formula. And here is my simple drawing. Yours would probably be way simpler, like maybe a stick figure and like, you know, a couple of details. And then here's my distance and how long it took for her to cross that distance. So I list my known and unknown variables. I know my distance, I know my time, but I'm solving for speed. And so therefore, this is my formula. Speed is equal to distance over time because it's rate. So now I just plug my known variables in with their units. And then I solve for speed. Just do the division. Remember, we read from the top to the bottom. So you plug it into your calculator, 10 divided by 15. And then my unit is going to be meters per, that's the fraction bar, second. So meters per second is my unit. 
So pretty simple, should be stuff that you have been exposed to before or are familiar with, shouldn't be difficult. All right, velocity. So now we're introducing a slightly different version of um, speed. Velocity simply includes direction. So if the velocity of an object is changing, it could be changing its speed or it could be changing its direction. Most of the time in this class, we are not going to be working with velocity's direction because that is um, a vector. We're simply just going to focus on um, the aspect of the distance traveled per time, uh, velocity, and not so much with the direction, but just so that you understand that they are very, very similar. The car's speed is 20 meters per second. Um, it's traveling 20 meters per second to the right would be the um, correct additional information you would need to describe its velocity correctly. Um, but sometimes we'll be working with velocity and we'll just be focusing on this aspect of velocity and not the vector component, not the piece that, that focuses on direction. But you should know the difference. All right, now forces. So forces, uh, what is a force? Basically, it's a push or pull on an object that results from that object's interaction with some other object. So we, we uh, have contact forces, like her kicking the ball, but we also have other non-contact forces like magnetism or gravity, right? These are non-contact forces that don't um, occur as the result of one object touching each other, but they're still acting on one another. Different kinds of forces, applied forces and normal forces. We'll talk more later about what is a normal force and it doesn't, it's not anything related to what you total, normally think of, the word normal to mean. And then we've got gravity, friction, right? So the force of his foot against the ground, that's a, that's a force. Uh, electromagnetism and nuclear forces, like the kind that hold atoms together or blow up in a nuclear bomb. Okay. How do we measure a force? So forces are gonna be measured with the SI unit of Newtons. So we're gonna be measuring a force using Newtons and a Newton is the force needed to accelerate one kilogram of mass at the rate of one meter per second. Oh, look, there's a typo. Uh, squared in the direction of the applied force. That's a lot of words. So let's break it down and see what exactly it means. A Newton is equal to the amount of force needed to accelerate at one meter per second squared an object that has a one kilogram mass. So in other words, a Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. Whew, that's a lot. But knowing this, a Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared is gonna become in handy when we need to cross cancel away certain units as we're doing math problems that are related to force. We also can measure force as a vector. So a vector is like a line that we draw that represents magnitude and direction. So this arrow would represent a vector and that vector has a length that's um, related to its magnitude and a direction that its motion is going. We will not be focusing on vectors in eighth grade, but if you take honors or AP physics in high school, you would be working with vectors, most likely. All right, forces. How are forces related to motion? Well, all motion is caused by a force. So in order to have motion, we must apply a force to an object in one way or another, like Darth Vader. Okay, last concept of this chapter is acceleration. So this is a little bit different from speed. Acceleration, we're gonna talk about all these things. All right, so acceleration is related to the change in velocity over time. So before we were looking at the change in distance over time, now we're gonna be looking at the change in velocity over time, right? So again, we're gonna be focusing on the aspect of velocity related to speed, not so much as direction. So the change in speed over time is how we calculate acceleration. So if you're in a car that's accelerating, its velocity is changing, right? Getting greater maybe um, over time. So we'll take a closer look at that. This is the, the version that we're gonna be using of this formula, which 
Velocity F means velocity final. This is the last, like the ending velocity, and this is velocity initial, the starting velocity. Notice that they're reversed, right? Everyone wants to go initial final, but it's flip-flop. Velocity final minus velocity initial over time. So if we were speeding up, the final would be bigger than the initial, and you'll end up with a positive number up here, and you'll end up with a positive acceleration. And if you end up with a vehicle that's maybe slowing down, you'll see that you'll end up with a negative number on the top, which means your answer will be negative, which will be showing that the object is slowing down. So we have a new triangle. These little triangle within the triangle, that triangle is delta. Delta means change, change in velocity. So change in velocity over acceleration and time. If I cover up the A, I can see it's a change in velocity over time. And yes, we can rearrange this to solve for any one of these variables. All right. So how are speed, velocity, and acceleration different? Well, and what does meters per squared, meters per second squared mean? Okay, right, we're going to talk about this. So what um, we're talking about here in speed is that it is distance divided by time, right? So how far did it go and how long did it take to go that far? That's speed. Velocity simply means that we're specifying the direction, right? So we use these oftentimes, especially in eighth grade, almost interchangeably since we aren't really focusing on direction much in this um, class. How's that different from acceleration? Well, acceleration now wants us to look at the change in velocity over time. So how does the velocity change over time? So this is when a vehicle uh, or an object is speeding up or slowing down, right? This is a constant speed, and this is a changing speed, right? Changing velocity. So one of the things that can be really confusing is when we have a constant velocity, the acceleration is zero, but the object is still moving. It's just not going any faster or going any slower. Okay, what does meters per second squared mean? Well, you can think of it as meters per second per second. So that means what is the change in its speed? Maybe its speed is meters per second. Its velocity is measured in meters per second. And the extra per second is how many meters per second it's changing every second. It's meters per second per second. That's why we have the squared. So how is its cha speed changing every single second? It's changing by some measure of meters per second every second. So this maybe makes it a little easier to look at. We don't see this very often, but kilometers per hour per second. So that means how many kilometers per hour is this objects velocity changing every single second, right? So every single second, this object's velocity might be increasing or decreasing, and we would represent it as kilometers per hour per second, but we don't do that often. We often focus on something that looks like this, which is meters per second per second, which we can represent as meters per second squared. Okay, practicing calculating acceleration. So here is our problem, a low friction cart being pulled by a hanging weight runs down a track. Its initial velocity is zero. By the time it reaches the end of the track, it's traveling eight meters per second. I know that's fast, right? Think about it, eight meters pretty far in one second. It takes two seconds for it to travel the length of the track. What is the cart's acceleration? So I'm gonna give you the triangle. Remember, change in velocity, so velocity, Final minus velocity initial is going to be our how we're going to calculate change in velocity over time. So I'll show you a picture of the cart so you understand the problem. I have this little low friction cart. It's being pulled by this weight around this pulley, down this track. It's changing its velocity. It starts at zero meters per second. It ends at eight meters per second, and it travels this distance in two seconds. Pause the video now and give this problem a try. Okay, if you're back, here is our known and unknown variable. So I know my velocity final is eight meters per second. My velocity initial is zero meters per second. Time is two seconds, and I'm solving for acceleration. 
So this is my formula. And remember, sorry, these, these underlines don't work well with subscripts. Notice velocity final, this final one goes first and velocity initial, this one right here goes second in my formula divided by time. So when I plug everything in, it looks like this. That should be one big long line, but it doesn't like to underline. So eight meters per second minus zero meters per second divided by two seconds. So when I do eight meters per second minus zero meters per second, I get eight meters per second. My two seconds, which this doesn't want to show, is um, underneath. And so when I do the division, eight divided by two gives me four meters per second per second. Because if you'll notice, I have a second that's right here, but it would flip down on the bottom and um, I would end up with meters per second squared as my final answer. <coughs> so hopefully you did well on that. If you have questions, definitely check in with me. I promise we're gonna be practicing this math plenty. Um, so I know you will get it. All right, that's it for now. Have a great day, everyone.